Hello beautiful people, this is the 18th of January and this is the birthday of Paul and Trust. He has quite an extensive list of achievements to his credit and I'll talk about a few but before I go on with that make sure you hit the subscribe button if you already haven't and click the bell icon so you never miss a video. If you like my work hit the like button and if you have to reach out to me use the comment section below. Now let's get moving. The first and most important contribution is Ernfest theorem which relates with quantum mechanics. In our daily life, we are accustomed to having exact values to physical quantities of a system, of a particle. We know for sure where a particle is, how fast it's moving, what, it mo what its momentum is. But quantum mechanics doesn't allow that. All it gives you is probabilities of various values being the value of the physical quantity that you are looking for. And the value that is most probably the value of the physical quantity is called the expectation value. For an example, Say you consider a particle, a quantum mechanical particle, you cannot tell where the particle is, but you can say, okay, this is where the particle should be with a probability of, let's say, 20%, or this is where the particle is with a probability of 80%. So the most probable value is the second one. So that is the expectation value. Not exactly. There is calculation and we find a value somewhere in between, but that's that. So in, also in our daily life, we are accustomed to having we know for a fact that the derivative of cohesion is velocity, mass times velocity is momentum and the derivative of momentum is force. But how could we do like get these equations to work in quantum mechanics because we do not know for sure what the values are. So what Anfes did was he told everyone that the derivative of the expectation value of the position of a particle is the expectation value of the velocity which is which when multiplied with mass gives the moment, expectation value of the momentum and the derivative of the momentum gives the force. Now force directly is not calculated in quantum mechanics. What we do is consider the potential field in which the particle is and we apply the potential operator on the expectation value of the position of the particle and put a minus sign before that. That's technical stuff, let it be. The second most important contribution is Arnfest paradox. This relates with special relativity. Special relativity states that if some thing is moving at speeds which are comparable to the speed of light, its length changes with the change in velocity. Now, what he considered was a rigid disk. It was being rotated about its axis of symmetry. Now, we know that radius is always perpendicular to the direction of the motion. So there is no change in the radius. That is very much evident from special relativity. That's basic stuff. But the circumference is always in the direction of the motion. So circumference should change. But that's what the paradox is. If the radius doesn't change, how could the circumference change? And the solution was found in two facts. First, the special relativity doesn't work in Euclidean space and the formula. 2 pi r for circumference is valid only for Euclidean spaces, the space that we are used to. But special relativity st states that the real physical space is somewhat different from the Euclidean space. And there is another fact. If you rotate a body at speeds which are comparable to the speed of sound in that body, the, the material will rupture, it won't hold anymore. Because of the centrifugal force. Centrifugal force establishes a centrifugal pressure in the body which cannot be greater than the shear modulus of the body's material. This is technical stuff again. So don't go into the details if you don't really understand all that much. Let be. So there's no way a part a real body could be rotated that's fast. So the paradox again is not valid for real world. He also came up with unfast equations which predict the change in specific heat and the derivatives of specific volume for a second order phase transitions. And that takes me to another thing, Ernfest classification. See there are phase transitions. Phase transitions are the transition in states of material. You have probably heard like from gases to liquid to solid. There are other phase transitions as well. So there are order of phase transition, first order phase transitions, second order phase transitions, and there are various ways of classifying transitions into first order or second order. What Anfes did was he provided a set of classifications which could tell you whether some particular transition was first order or second order or otherwise. So these are Anfes classification. He also came up with Anfes Tolman effect. It states that the temperature in space 
during thermal equilibrium is not constant instead it varies with the space time curvature okay other than this he also has unfest model to his credit which he came up with his wife tatiana who was also a mathematician and physicist she has contributions in statistical mechanics and statistical physics as well okay so what unfest model or dog flea model of diffusion states all it does is like explain the second law of thermodynamics which states that the entropy in space always increases with time it cannot always it can it cannot ever decrease over a total system okay other than that he also came up with two terms he also termed two things first spinners spinners are just like vectors in complex spaces now we are used to dealing with vectors in euclidean spaces we know that if we rotate a vector about 360 degree there is no change in it whatsoever in euclidean space so spinners are elements vector elements of complex space complex spaces which when product projected into the euclidean space and rotated about 360 degree there is a net change in direction what i what it means is vector you take a vector and you rotate it by 360 degree but by the time you're done you will observe that its direction has it is direction is the opposite of what you began with there is a minus sign in front of it mathematically isn't that weird you rotate a vector 360 degrees and all you get is what it it has just rotated somehow but that's what spinners do and if you are interested in what are its real world applications or more physical applications to be precise it is in the spin of electrons you have probably heard if you have studied physics somewhat that the spin number of an electron is half it could be plus half or minus half depending on the direction but it is half if you take the value itself what it means is you need to rotate an electron two times about its axis of symmetry to take it to the position where it was before you began the rotation i mean if you rotate it two whole times of 360 degrees that is 720 degrees you get it to the initial position it's weird to common sense if you rotate a ball about 360 degree it is where you started with but with electrons it doesn't happen it needs to be rotated by 720 degrees and that's where spinners come in the spin vector of an electron is a spinner so what you do is if you rotate a electron by 360 degrees this is like i said there is a minus sign before it so you need to rotate it another 360 degrees to remove the minus sign as well that's with spinners he also came up with the term ultraviolet catastrophe which associates with the black body radiation relegins law of the black body radiation to be very precise relegins law of the black body radiation radiation states that as a frequency of the radiation increases or the frequency that you are considering increases the energy that is being radiated at that particular frequency also increases but if you logically consider frequency that are very high that tend to infinity the energy that is being radiated also tend to infinity but that's not possible nothing can radiate infinite amount of energy but the radiation is always made at all possible frequencies so that that's where the law broke down these are the major contributions of ernfest to physics that's it for today keep loving physics